guys, just going to be going over the Auto Sports Engineering uh, dual uh, fuel pump hanger for the 350Z G35. Um, nice, simple little piece, just like most of our uh, fuel pump hangers. Uses the same bulkhead that we integrated into all of our other hangers. Uh, makes it really easy. Um, that allows you to do your float wiring for your uh, fuel level sensor as well as individual grounds and powers for your high output wall bros, AEMs, any other pumps that are out there on the market that carry an inch and a half body. Uh, right now these are the wall bro, the uh, 525s which are also the Hellcat pumps, the newest and latest that they have, highest output. Um, a lot of people ask what size pumps does it fit. Basically if the body of your pump is an inch and a half in diameter, not down here, not at the bottom, but the actual housing body, if it's inch and a half, then it'll be able to work. Uh, we do have an adjustable set screw on the side. Uh, as a note, when you're installing these, do not over tighten the set screws. You just slightly snug them. We'll go over that later. Now as far as setting up and installing these pumps into the hanger, it's pretty simple. I'm going to do one. You go ahead and you slide the wire harness through. Some of you guys might actually cut that off and use uh, butt connectors or spades just to take up less room. It's your own personal option. I don't force you to do anything. Um, you can see, drop this one in here for now. Set screw on the side. Now what I typically tell people is just snug the screw to the point where you can still get the pump to slide up and down. Now the reason for that We'll go over a little bit later. All right, that's good. See, it takes a little bit more effort, but it does uh, it does actually slide and it will stay in place. All right, now you'll notice, some of you guys can sit there and stretch uh, submersible fuel hose to angle this. The reason I don't, we actually like the, uh, the really nice convoluted flexible hose. Now, the way how we get this to work is you actually go ahead, we'll temporarily, I'll place it on the pump. I'll give you an example. So this one slides onto the pump. Now instead of how do you get it up here, do not cut these hoses. You're not going to be able to crimp and get a proper seal to maintain fuel pressure on the convoluted section of the hose. That's why the hose already comes with flats. So what we do is, very simple. We actually create loops. So on this one you'll see I'll wrap it around and I'm going to go to the opposite side. I don't go straight up to the fitting that is right above the, the pump. So as you can see, very simple. Came up, I looped, and I went to the opposite side. And you're going to do the exact same thing for the other pump once that's installed. I'll slide this one in. Was gonna do two, but I might as well, or only one pump. Since we're already here, I'll do the second one for you guys. Just so there's no confusion. Same thing. Loop and then go up to the opposite side. And that's it. I have two pumps, double looped, makes it nice and clean, and you still have the return fit in on the back. Now, you're gonna ask, I'm gonna show you how to set up the return here in a minute. Now, the final part Actually, you'll do this last, but typically right now you would attach the uh, factory fuel uh, level sending unit to the bracket that's right here. It'll drop right in. There's two openings right there. Uh, you take a tie strap, you loop it through, you tighten it down. Quick, easy, simple. Uh, reason for that is on this orientation, unlike some of our other kits, those float units don't have any mountable uh, holes. And to keep the cost down for you guys on the kit instead of machine a really complex piece of float. We made a pretty easy index in attachment. So that a pretty good height for you guys so that you still get accurate uh, fuel notation. Um, 
So like I said, drop that in there and loop it through. There's actually two holes already on the float unit. When a halfway decent uh, tie strap will do the job right there to hold it on there for a pretty extended amount of time. Now, this is the last piece, which some of you guys probably saw inside your kits and you're wondering, well, what it is? Well, this is actually our Venturi setup for the, for the unit to pull from the opposite side on your saddle tank. Um, this is a custom machine fitting. This allows you to reuse the factory in-tank fuel line, which will snap onto this just like it did snap onto the factory uh, uh, siphon jet on the bottom of your OEM fuel pump assembly. So basically, so because of the orientation, this custom fitting points down towards the bottom of the tank just like factory because the factory hose has a 90 degree uh, end on it. So that will basically just pop straight up. So it'll snap right into place. You don't have to cut and tie or worry about anything on that. That makes it uh, pretty simple. That also means that the black fitting, this 3 8 hose bar, will point towards the top of the tank. And the orientation is going to be just below the center fitting, which is your return. So the easiest way I can tell you to attach this, it's very simple, is we'll get a piece of 3 8 submersible fuel hose. push that in real quick and then slide that up and into place onto the factory return. You'll be able to orient this so that it doesn't interfere with your own with the factory uh, float unit and that's pretty much it. That's your assembly right there. Remember factory fitting points down, black fitting points towards the top, orient it to the center return and that's it you're done. I. We're not going to go over anything wiring related because that is uh, 12 volt. So if you're not familiar with wiring 12 volt relays, uh, you can look it up online or just take it to somebody that has the experience to do it properly and not uh, short your fuses. You should typically, I would recommend, um, use your factory circuit to trigger the primary pump, but have a nice uh, 30 or 40 amp. Uh, Tyco or a Bosch relay for each individual pump. Uh, secondary, um, you got to have either a hop switch if you're not running a standalone. Uh, those we actually have on the site as well for wiring. So you can basically adjust the hop switch, which will sense uh, boost pressure. So you can set it to come on at you know only above 15 psi. So your secondary pump isn't on all the time. You get more life out of your fuel system. Now the last piece. When we go to drop this in the tank, you're probably wondering, I told you at the beginning to leave the set screws loose. Now the reason behind that is very simple. So you guys are like, you have two ways. You can either go ahead and sit there and measure the height, the compressed height of your OEM tank to set your pump heights, because you have a, obviously a range of adjustability, especially with the flex uh, convoluted hoses. But typically, like I said, slight amount of tension, push them in the tank, push everything in the tank because you can keep tension on it however you push it down it will stay that way so that when you pull it out of the tank you have the right amount of height and then at that point you just snug them usually about a half a turn from where it was and now your pumps are at the right height submerged inside your tank that easy